Hey guys, it's Base Kato, and in today's video, I wanted to do a little chit chat. Get ready with me. Um, get ready with me for my 25th birthday, you guys. So I'm turning 25, literally March 6th. Today is March 5th. I want to do like a um, test trial run of my makeup um, to see how I'm gonna do it later on because later on today, March 5th, Saturday, I'm gonna be having a dinner. I had dinner reservations with my friends and then from there we're probably gonna go to a lounge or a club afterwards and I was bringing my uh, birthday out like lit and having fun I feel like this video is a video where I just need to get a few things off of my mind and there's still a lot of things on my mind but I just wanted to share these few things with you guys maybe you guys will find some sort of lesson out of these stories because y'all i've learned so much <laughs> i have learned so much these 25 years of living so i just kind of want, wanted to share some of my experience with you guys but yeah so anyways hopefully you guys enjoy watching this and let's go ahead and get into the get ready with me first off off camera i did go ahead and um fill in my eyebrows i used the la girl um perfect precision it's actually like an eyeliner in the shade brown yeah i don't use this on my eyes at all i just use this on my brows and to line my lips and it's really good for that but y'all i have not filmed a youtube video in a hot minute i'm like what is going on what am i doing but I have been posting a lot of YouTube shorts. I kind of like the shorts platform. And I will say I've also been posting a lot on TikTok. I like finally caved in and made a TikTok and now I'm like obsessed. So a new thing that I'm gonna try with my makeup routine today is I wanted to try sticking to just using only brushes as much as possible instead of using my um, Real Techniques sponge. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this video topic. So pretty much, I just wanted to talk about just some things that I've learned, life lessons so far that I've learned throughout my 25 years of living. So the first big lesson that I've learned, and I'm still learning, is that you can't like compare yourself to other people. Like Once you start comparing yourself to other people and their lifestyles and how their life is going, like that's when you start to that's when you lose, like for real. Recently, I would notice that every time I would go on to Instagram and stuff, like Instagram, whenever I would look at what my followers are doing, it would just make me feel some type of way. Not in a, in a, well, yeah, it would make me feel some type of way. Cause it's like, dang, like they just seem like they're living the life, they're traveling. I've never been overseas cause I don't even have a passport, but that's, just me and my problem that can be easily fixed but I mean they're just doing stuff like that and I don't know always going out the center there whereas me I don't really travel that much or as much as I used to which I kind of want to start traveling more I don't have a passport but I'm gonna get one I'll see y'all this video may be all over the place because it's hard for me to talk and do my makeup at the same time especially talk and make sense and I didn't really write down what I was going to say so all this is coming from this heart but yeah do not compare yourself to other people because you'll end up just feeling worse off literally that's why I actually um deactivated my Instagram back in uh early January and what I say I said I will shut that shit down because it just got to be too much like every day i would wake up and the first thing i would do is open up instagram like that's toxic so i was like let me delete this app so i deactivated my account i mean i could reactivate it anytime but i just had like no desire to my friends were talking about i should reactivate it for my birthday but it's too soon because i don't want to reactivate it and then see something that like I didn't want to see and then I feel some type of way on my birthday, you know, like Because I'm still not like ready to get back on Instagram Because I'm still working on Trying not to compare myself to other people and blah 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 real quick y'all So I actually went to Ulta earlier today and I want to try the Rihanna powder bronzer And honestly, I was gonna get a shade darker than the shade that I got but 
they didn't have that shit in stock and i honestly i hate going to this ulta because they never have anything in stock so it's so annoying well they have stuff in stock up until it gets to my shade and then it's out of stock and that always happens i'm just like what the heck like what's the demographic in this area because y'all definitely need to supply more darker shades than the lighter shades but anyways so i got the fenty beauty bronzer in the shade caramel cutie or caramel cutie whatever you say so we're gonna try this out but first i'm gonna put this on my eyelids kind of like acting as a eyeshadow Ooh, i don't want to spill my drink it's so cute you know how it's different it's different when you see someone that you don't know on the internet living their best life aka uh flying out on private jets getting designer bags um this is that and the third like it's different when you see someone you don't know compared to seeing someone you do know that lives down the street from you having that type of lifestyle it just hits different you know because it's like dang it's like oh the girl next door can do all these things why can't i but at the end of the day i had to like reprogram my brain which that's what i'm doing right now to think I can do that so I am gonna do that so that's the type of mindset that I've been adopting lately also I feel like I need to give y'all like a life update in general so y'all I'm not gonna lie this another this is gonna lead into another life lesson so I was working for this one company it was a very popular brokerage firm and so I got this job back when I had first got out of college and I'm not gonna lie, like the job was cool at first because we were in training for four weeks and then we had to obtain um, our licenses so we can work in the finance industry. So I had to get my, well, first of all, I had to take the SIE, which is the Securities Industries Essentials ex exam, I passed that. And then I had to take my Series 7, which is another finance exam. That exam was so hard, you guys. I didn't even think I was gonna pass, but I passed the first time, which normally, um, not saying that people don't pass the first time, but it's just, it's hard. And then I also got my series 63. And then at work, I started training for, to get my trader certification, get my trading license. But once I got my, trading license at this job it's like working at this job just went downhill super quick like it was always downhill but it's like it really went downhill because it's like okay at this point i don't really have anything to really look forward to because like when i first got hired at this job from the jump they were saying oh yeah you're gonna be studying for all of your licenses and everything so you know i was like working towards something that whole time those first that first pretty much a year but then after i got my trader certification and became a licensed trader trader where i can actually place trades for people yeah that's when i didn't really like the job because first off this to me this job was a glamorized call center job because today tomorrow yes the next day uh -huh. and them days after that period you probably had the right idea right but the wrong bit hello like they didn't say they didn't maybe it was me which that's another life lesson um uh, whenever you're interviewing for a company ask as many questions as possible it, like no question is a silly question like every question is actually really important because you need to know these things so I did not know that this job was borderline me working at a call center because y'all, it got to the point, I didn't know this place was this damn busy. It would be, so I would work, mind you, this call, this brokerage firm was open or my part of the brokerage firm was open 24 seven, the customer service line, just like annoying. People had weird shifts. Like I remember some people had a shift where they would work from 1 45 p.m. to 12 45 a.m. like who wants to do that but anywho my shift was from 9 15 a.m. to 6 p.m. we got two breaks 
like two 15 minute breaks and a 45 minute lunch. Y'all, when I tell you the moment you put yourself on available, cause you have to code yourself to available first on your computer before you get a call. Y'all, it's like as soon as I would code myself available, I would get a call immediately. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And actually at this job, they had like a cue board where you can check the wait times for each department and it'll tell you how many people are like holding to speak to a representative y'all like just to get to my department the trading department it would take people sometimes the wait times would be like three four hours like can you imagine waiting all day to place a trade that's the right idea right but the wrong bit hello i mean in trading stocks is very time sensitive so it's like every time i would get someone on the phone to place a trade they would always be so annoyed or like really mad and stuff because they had to wait which i understand but it's like i'm already getting back-to-back -back calls i don't get a break in between calls and like you can code yourself to not ready like, you code yourself to ready, you're going to get a call. But if you code yourself to not ready work, then you're not going to get a call because you may need to, like, catch up on things or whatever. Okay, y'all, by the way, I'm going to put on my lashes. I'm going to put on the 3D Mink lashes, like, by Miss Lash in the style 06. So, they're real cute or whatever. I get them from the beauty supply store. They're $6.99. But, okay, back to what I was saying, though. So, so normally, whenever any caller would call in, the first thing you had to do, first of all, they would call in and be like, oh, I wanna, you know, place a trade or da da da. So you'd be like, okay, let me verify you first. So we would ask for their name, address, you know, whatever. Verifiers on the account. Which, mind you, I don't understand. I do understand, but I don't. I hate when people when I would verify them and I would ask them what's the um, we will only la we will only ask for the last four of your social for verification and people would be like oh I don't give that information out or someone was like I don't give my email out bruh I see it right here in front of me I see the full number right here like I and I remember one time like somebody had said that to me and i'm i was just like well i'm verifying what's on file i see a number on file i'm just trying to verify it like man you don't already gave us that information oh okay oh okay every time we would talk to any client or literally they would just basically say every call we definitely need to um leave an interaction on the account it was actually like a bad thing if you if someone called in and you didn't leave an interaction on the account. So they were definitely stressing that. So that's why sometimes after a call, I would put myself on not ready work just so I can log and put in my interactions on the account to say, pretty much you uh, say what the interaction was about, whether you placed a trade or da da da. Y'all, every time I would do that shit, like my manager, which I had three managers when I was working at this brokerage firm. My first manager was pretty cool. He was actually my favorite, favorite manager. And honestly, I wouldn't have gotten another manager. It's just that that manager that I had, he moved to a different department within the brokerage firm. And I know he wanted to bring me, but I wasn't a trader certified just yet. My second manager, no so first of all my second manager he was a new manager so my old manager he let me and my team get away with a lot of things but not like a lot of bad things it's just like hey this is what working this is what we have to deal with working from home like you know what i'm saying just like stuff will happen my uh, my um so yeah my cool manager i'm gonna call him morphe so Morphe, he was cool. Like he was a dope manager, my first manager um, at that job. My second manager, we're gonna call him 
Urban Decay. So Urban Decay, he was a new manager. So basically the team that I was on was the first team he had ever managed before. So I already knew like being a new manager, there's probably people, a lot of oversight and compliance was probably over him heavy just to make sure that he was doing things correctly. But he was doing the most like for real, for real in my opinion. He was doing the most because it was like, as soon as I would put myself on not ready work to put in an interaction, which mind you, I would only put myself on not ready work for like maybe 30 seconds, like at the most. And he would like be DMing me talking about, please go back available and blah, 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 and like take calls. And it's just like, bro, it don't matter like how many of us are available. It's still gonna be 500 folks waiting to place a trade. It's still gonna be a two hour long wait. Like, do you think me alone can fix the wait times? Like, come on now. So that was one thing about that job. There, it was basically a glamorized call center job. Like, I don't know what else to call it. And I just hated it because people would, were just always so rude. There was always like website problems with this company to, to the point where people would have to call in to place a trade, of course, and people would be mad. They'll be like, I missed out on money. Oh, okay. I remember somebody called in. He was like, I'm going to sue everybody. What's your full name? Da 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 da. Oh, okay. I ain't getting no letter in the mail yet. It's been like over a year. Like, boy. But they always, oh my God, like these customers, man. Oh, okay. I'm gonna wear these lashes tomorrow, y'all, because they look real good. Harry! Okay, so, but to continue my story. So yeah, once I was on Urban Decay's team, and this was like literally right after I got my trader certification license and everything, dealing with folks and placing trades, like I just did not like that job, like at all. Like it got to the point where every day I would be waking up crying before going to work, you know? And that's not, good you shouldn't feel that way going to work that's another life lesson i feel like i've kind of learned you don't have to stay in something you don't have to stay at a job if you don't want to it's okay to quit because me i always thought quitting that's like for failures i'm not a failure da, 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 da. and also like whenever i would tell people oh i'm a stockbroker especially like my family and stuff they'd be like oh my god like you got that big money and blah 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 like people just look at you a certain way but at the end of the day man if you are happy to leave first off Who cares what other people think? And that's literally what I feel like I'm learning now at this point. I'm learning how to make choices and decisions for myself, not for other people. I don't know how to explain it. I guess growing up, I always did what my parents said. Like I would always take my parents' advice because my parents, they always you know, wanna, wanna lead me to the right direction and they always have. And they've done a good job at that. But I feel like now at this point, now that I'm at this age of 25, it's kind of like, all right, I'm at that age where I feel like I need to do some exploring on my own without my parents. And it's like also at this age, I feel like I know what I really want to do. Like, I, I know what I want to do in life and what I'm doing right now is not aligning with what I want to do, <laughs> if that makes sense. Oh, by the way, for foundation, well, for primer, I use the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I don't like this primer like that, but people love this primer, so let me just see, but I don't really like it like that. I'm just using that primer right now because I don't want to use my Benefit Professional just for no reason. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know that works. Perry! But for foundation, I'm using the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation in the shade Bahia. Y'all know this is my go-to foundation. So, and I'm gonna apply the foundation with the brush. I'm going to, I don't know. I think we use this Real Techniques brush. But yeah, what I'm doing in life right now isn't really aligning exactly where I want to be. So, but I'm not mad. It's like, I feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but at the same time, I feel like I am. Like it's part of the process. 
So pretty much after I left that brokerage firm, well, here's how I left the brokerage firm. So after I got my trader certification in the summertime, it was like okay for a little bit, but then I was really starting to feel, you know, how I was feeling more so definitely like towards August, definitely September because that was like my year mark of being at this company. So I started doing interviews, applying elsewhere, and it's so crazy because, so I interviewed at this one place, which I work at now, and I'm not gonna lie, when they first contacted me, the recruiter, and like he explained the job, the job ex sounded exactly like what I was already doing at the Berkish firm that I worked at. It's just that the pay was of course like more, and I remember it was so funny because I was talking to my mom and I was like, yeah, I had this one job offer, but I don't know because and I remember saying, I don't know, like I would be doing pretty much the same thing that I'd be doing at the other brokerage firm, but they pay more. And then I said, said this out loud. I was thinking out loud and I was like, but hey, I'd rather do the same thing and get way more money than be here doing the same thing and getting less money. Like I said it to the extent like that. And my mom was like, go for it. Like, I, I would do that. And if you get another job, then you can leave that job. So I was like, you know what, you're right. So I put in my two weeks notice, technically quit on the spot, but two weeks notice. I did that in October, October, like I think 17th. So that's when I pretty much was done with the stockbroker job. So this next job that I got, I thought I was gonna start it in December, but it's so crazy because there's like some weird holdup with my social security card because they were like saying that my social security card for some reason already matched somebody in the system. Wrong bitch. Hello. So I was like, that's weird. So they had to like, it was just like a whole extra shit, right? So pretty much I didn't actually start my job until January. Me, and mind you, I got the job offer back in October and I already put in my two weeks notice y'all. So that's another life lesson y'all, by the way. If I could do it all over again, well actually no, if I could do it all over again, I would do exactly what I did. But in hindsight, the smarter decision would have been to put in my two weeks notice after I got my start date at the other job. Because what if I actually was really depending on this money for work to survive? You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have been SOL, so. But I'm not gonna lie, that break between working that brokerage job to this next job that I have was definitely necessary. And this next job that I have now, I actually really like it. So I'm still in finance, I'm in private banking, just dealing with um, retail and really big um, high net worth clients. And I deal exclusively with um, the buying and selling of mutual funds in their accounts. But yeah, once I, um, started working at this job y'all this job that i have now is like it's like night and day compared to the stockbroker job first off there, we don't get we don't get back-to-back -back calls at the other job i would have you so at my other job my old job the stockbroker job every week they would show us our weekly stats they would show us like our call times our average handle time average hold time how many sales referrals we got it was all like a competition amongst like your uh, other colleagues it was weird so every week y'all i was taking like 500 like 400 500 calls like that's crazy right well actually no i mean those not that many calls um but i will say on average i would hit at least between 30 to 40 calls a day at this new job that i work at i, I haven't even gotten 10 calls a day like i literally like some days i'm literally just sitting like watching youtube on my phone i look back and think on that day when i was making or talking to my mom about 
this job and me making the, the making the decision and I'm just like I am so glad I made the decision to work here that's something that I've been learning about myself and it's something that I've always known about myself but it's kind of like I haven't trusted myself fully but always follow your intuition like your intuition will never lead you astray for real because my intuition was telling me like i already knew i wasn't gonna stay at this brokerage firm for long i was gonna like lose my mind like literally and something told me to just take that leap leap of faith and get a new job which i know for some people getting a new job is um easy but for other people that's not really easy because whether you like a job or not, you get used to the routine of that job. It's like you can't, it, it's once you get comfortable at a certain place, it can be hard to leave. For cream bronzer, I'm using the LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Dark Cocoa. So I still kind of want to talk about um, comparison, how comparing yourself to other people can be detrimental to your own mental health because y'all i don't know why that's like been on my mind but it just like has been that's how i know i don't really want to like uh activate my instagram again and what i say i said i will shut that shit down but i will say the thing i've learned about me comparing myself to others sometimes i feel like i do that because i see other people doing some of the things that like i've been wanting to do and it's like they're actually doing it and then in your head you're thinking oh that could have been me but my laziness or whatever my thoughts of failure got the best of me and it's like in your head you think that how do i put it it's like in your head you think that oh god or whoever you believe in like you think that he gave you these special abilities but you didn't you didn't tap into it so now he's giving it to someone else and they're reaping the benefits you know what i'm saying like that's how i felt for a while whenever i would go online i'll be like dang if only i had just stayed consistent doing this or if only i had done this da 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 like I could have been doing this and then I would spiral into a whole little depressive state and yeah that's just how I would always feel every time I would open up social media and stuff so that's why I was like you know what let me just de not delete but deactivate my social reprogram my mindset and actually start doing the things that I said I was going to do, you know, like start, I need to start holding my own self accountable. If I say I'm going to do something, like I need to actually be doing it, you know? Okay, real quick for a concealer, I'm using the Flax Concealer. Also, I wanted to say, be careful who you surround yourself by too, because there's a lot of people who say they're your friend, but secretly, like they probably hate you or something, or are secretly jealous of you. And that's not like a good thing at all so story time about that i remember i met this one girl through one of my friends which mind you the actually let me give people names just so y'all can kind of keep up with things so i've been friends with this girl named lily since i kind of first moved to atlanta so we've been friends for a little while so like we cool and she's still my friend actually to this day i'm gonna see her tomorrow on my birthday well saturday march 5th but through her i met this other girl maybe like two or three years after i met her this girl we can call her nars so i met nars through lily and at first like all the three of us we would all hang out but then lily like lily she'd be going through stuff like with her boyfriend at the time so after a while it's kind of like me and nars started hanging out together and to be honest me and nars like we hit it off like i thought we was like really friends well we were really friends like we hung out all the time she'll come over to my place 
<laughs> we was real life friends. And then all of a sudden, like, things change so fast. Oh! Whoa! Because so New Year's came, right? And all of us were planning our New Year's Eve plan. So me and Lily, we were like, okay, well, we're finna go do opium. We would always just get in for free and this and the third. So she was like, yeah, we're finna go to opium. Meanwhile, Nars, she, and let me give you background on Nars real quick. She was always on Bumble. And matter of fact, Lily and Nars met on Bumble. So Nars meets a lot of her friends through Bumble, which I mean, nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of people in Atlanta do that, so I'm not on Bumble personally, but I mean, I'm not against it. But she was the type that would use Bumble to just have hella friends and whatnot. And so New Year's Eve comes and Nars had met these group of girls through Bumble, right? I'm not sure she's actually like hung out with them in person, but pretty much they're new friends. Like, like she don't know these girls like that, right? And so she was saying, hey, um, these group of girls, like we all wanna get a section at this place called Boogaloo or whatever for New Year's Eve. And did y'all wanna put in, she was asking, Nars was asking me and Lily, did we wanna go? Because if we did, then the section would be like a hundred dollars if all of us threw in and blah, 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 blah. First off, me and Lily, we was not finna be doing that because it's New Year's Eve. We don't know these girls and it's like nothing against them, but it's just like New Year's Eve of all nights. Like, I just feel like you would want to be with, with your friends that you always hung out with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like who brings in the new year with like new people? I mean, you could do that, but but that just like was not the vibe, right? And so Nars gonna get mad. Oh, and also me and Lily, we was like, we already have solidified plans. Like you're y'all are still playing in this section, this section shit. We already got our shit together, and like we're not paying. Harry, like we're not paying for a damn thing. And mind you, we didn't pay for a damn thing New Year's Eve, so. But so yeah, Nars was getting mad because we didn't want to throw in for the section. And so that was that. So New Year's came and went. I was with Lily. Nars was doing her own thing, whatever. And I, y'all, I don't know, but it's something about New Year's Eve. It must have triggered that girl or something because she switched up quick. Like she stopped kind of hanging out with us and started hanging out with these Bumble group more often oh okay oh okay which i mean that's cool whatever i don't care we kind of still talk to nars a little bit in like january 2021 so i don't know how this happened but me and lily end up being added into the instagram group chat that nars was in with all the bumble people and so like I got introduced to a few of them. I mean, they seem cool or whatever. And they were talking about going to get mimosas or whatever somewhere, right? Mind you, this was like on a Tuesday or something. So yeah, they wanted to do a brunch and mimosas on a Saturday and it was like Tuesday. And so my, I already knew I wasn't gonna come cause I, I don't know what happened, but I just knew I couldn't come. So I had already told them in advance. I was like, oh, I can't come to this, da 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 da. Um, but Lily did say she could come because at the time, I think she actually could come. So she wanted to come to get brunch mimosas. But fast forward to the day of, something came up with Lily, um, like something between her and, and her family. You know, nothing crazy, nothing like crazy, but she just had to do something for her family. So she couldn't go to brunch mimosas on Saturday. And the Bumble girls got so mad that she didn't tell them, which mind you guys, it was at least probably between 10 to 20 girls in the group chat. Well, definitely more than 10. It was a lot of people in that group chat. So I'm like, how is one person gonna make that big of a difference? 
with whatever y'all was doing. So they were mad at Lily because Lily's ass couldn't come, but I'm just like, Lily was just like, I mean, I have family stuff, like something family related came out, like I don't know what you want me to tell you, right? Come to find out, well, not come to find out, but this is my theory. My theory is, at this brunch and mimosa spot, on Saturdays, they serve this particular mimosa that's like the, a super-sized mimosa that usually like the whole table would share. And I think that super-sized mimosa is like $150. Cause this is a really big mimosa, but I'm pretty sure it was like mostly like punch. You know what I'm saying? My theory is I'm pretty sure those girls were trying to split the tab and they were mad because Lily couldn't come. So because of course Lily couldn't come, the tab was gonna be a little bit more expensive for everybody. Ha! Got it! Ha! Me, I'm thinking, okay, well maybe y'all just can't afford this big ass drink. Oh! Whoa! And y'all need to get y'all's own separate mimosas. Like, problem solved. That's not, that's not my friend Lily's problem. That's y'all's problem. Like, you know what I'm saying? Terry! That's weird. And mind you, they literally have never met Lily. We've just been in the same group chat on Instagram for like that one time. But yeah, because, and also I was gonna say because of that one incident, they kicked Lily out of the group chat. I was like, what? Whoa. You know what's so funny? Like literally not even a week later, they just randomly kicked me out of that um, Bumble chat. And then somebody gonna message me on the side and say, Oh, girl, actually, you know what? I'm skipping um, some stories. But yeah, someone on, uh, messaged me on the side after they kicked me out. And they're like, girl, it's nothing personal. It's just we kicked out Lily and Lily added you. So we're kicking you out. Like, what? <laughs> what? Oh! Mind you, the group chat's name was um Pretty Girls Only. I'm like, well, y'all need to remove a lot of y'all. <laughs> Terry! Not even do that, but... That's what I was thinking in my head. Y'all, I totally forgot. Y'all, okay, I don't know when this, I, I can't remember the timeline because this did happen like a year ago. So I can't remember if Lily got kicked out the group chat before or after this, but I'm pretty sure it was probably after this. So I remember some of the people from the Bumble group, like the, the head girls of the Bumble group or whatever, so they're actually planning on going out this one particular night, right? And I was like, okay, I wanna go too. And they're like, okay, like, cool. Yo, my makeup is kind of separating like by my nose. I'm like, uh-uh. See, that's why we do a trial run the day before. So the first place that they went to was like some lounge, like a hookah lounge or whatever. Mind you, these group of girls, when they go out, they like have the entire night plan. I'm not the type to have like my entire night plan. I'll just have one place plan, but then I'll go with the flow from there. I don't like planning when it comes to like me going out. So, but yeah. So first they're gonna go to the Suka Lounge and then from there they're gonna go to this club called 1145 in Atlanta. And so I was like, okay. So I was getting ready, y'all. Me, so me, I'm not gonna lie, it does take me a little minute to get ready. So I didn't make it to the first lounge, but that's okay. Because as soon as I got ready, I told them, hey, I'm about to be on the way. They're like, okay, cool. We're actually headed to 1145 now. And I was like, okay, bet. And they're like, how far are you? And I told them, I think I was, I'm like 10 minutes from there. And they're like, oh, okay, bet, we're literally 10 minutes too. And so in my head, I'm thinking, oh, we're gonna arrive at the club at the same time. And I'm driving to, mind you, 11.45. I just don't, I hate parking, like going to the club and trying to park and stuff. Like it's always just like something. And 11.45 is one of those places. And they charge a lot too. We were supposed to arrive at 11.45 at the same time. So I'm thinking by the time I park, they should be kind of like walking up to the club at this point so I can walk in with them. Child, that's not how it went. Pretty much how it went was we did both 
pull up to 11.45 at the same time. It's just that me, I just had to wait in that line to park. So they had been parked, but they're all the way down the road from 11.45. So they had to walk up. Meanwhile, I parked, I was going to park literally on the side of 11.45. So I'm already right there at the entrance pretty much. NARS and all her little bumble crew, they had already parked and they're in the process of like walking up to the club, right? Because they're meeting some guys there that they had met at the lounge prior. And so I remember telling NARS, I was like, hey, do you mind just waiting on me like two seconds like I'm literally parking so at that point I was parking when she was like oh we're at the front now and I was like girl I'm literally parking and I told her I'm at the front too it's just like I'm on the side I was like can you please wait on me just so I can walk in with y'all since you guys are meeting someone there and the guys that they were meeting there, I mean, they wouldn't have mind waiting on me. It, it's not like it was taking me forever, you guys. It, they only had to wait up at the front for maybe an extra minute. But like, as, but that you, um, you had you. But y'all, this girl Nars, she just decided that she couldn't wait, so she ended up going into the club with her friends and everything. And I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And so I was blowing up her phone and everything. Uh, and I was like, well, can you come back outside? And like, I didn't, I, and it's like, I didn't need her to come all the way outside to my car. But at the same time, she really could because my car was right there. But I was like, can someone at least come outside and get me from the front? Because I know none of y'all paid to like get into 1145. Not saying that I couldn't pay, but I was just like, I, I didn't know what was going on, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking they had a section at 11.45, so, like, these people would have to come out and give me wristbands. But, yeah, long story short, my friend, she never actually came outside to get me. Oh! Whoa! I was literally, I was literally waiting outside for, like, 20 minutes after I parked. She gave one of the dudes that was supposed to have a section she gave him my number so that he can call me and pretty much get me from outside. I'm like, bro, I don't even know this man. Like, and you are letting some random man like come get me and y'all don't know him either. Like, girl, I was thinking like maybe she would come with him, but no. So it was like awkward. And then I knew um, everything was gonna go downhill because as soon as I got into 11.45 and like found my friends or whatever, the other guys that they were with, mind you, they weren't at a section. They didn't They didn't have a section, so they were standing at the bar. I was like, I could have just went home. But yeah, so the other guys that they were with, when they seen me, they're like, oh my God, like you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Like the way the guy said it, it kind of took me aback too because I just wasn't expecting it. But all the girls heard that shit because they were like, I heard one girl say, well, damn. And I was like, <laughs> and I, oh, mind you, I did not want that man. I knew from then that they were not going to fuck with me because after that night, y'all, I didn't see NARS again. So. After that night, that's when everything happened in the group chat where we got kicked out, me and Lily. And then after that, Nars, she just blocked us on Instagram. It was weird. Like, I, it was so weird. Well, she didn't just block us. So this is what happened. So I remember Nars at this point, she, she reminds me of myself, like, and she has like really nice hair like mine but she straightens her hair all the time and i remember telling her like girl you need to stop straightening your hair like because she would always want her curls to be like mine not always but i just remember she mentioned that one time and i was just like girl stop straightening your hair because <laughs> i mean i used to straighten my hair all the time and my hair looked like that so i mean i understand so like i said she would always be doing stuff with her hair and I remember at this point, she was starting to test out extensions and everything. And so one picture that she posted, 
I see her hair looked a little bit longer, and this was after she had gotten her braids taken out. She got her braids taken out. She wanted, I already know, she wanted it to, she wanted to make it seem like her hair grew that long after braids. Girl, you ain't fooling nobody. And I, oh, ha, got it. I know their extensions that she had, but I mean, they, they look nice. So I was like, I, I remember DMing her, like sending her the picture that she posted. And I was like, hey girl, um, are these extensions? And I was saying, are these extensions? Because I was like thinking she would be like, yeah, they're such and such brand or whatever. And her ass gonna say, no, they're, that's my real hair. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And I was like, are you dead ass or being serious? Cause I'm like, we're, if we're friends, like I'm thinking you would tell me. Like it's different if I didn't know her and stuff, especially like now some people be, some people be calling out other girls because they wear, it's just, I don't know, you already know. So I was like, so now you just lying to my face. Like that was like the last straw for me. Because today, Tomorrow, yeah, the next day, uh -huh. and them days after that. Period. You probably had the right idea, right? But the wrong bit. Hello. So I had unfollowed her. The intention of me unfollowing her wasn't to be like, oh, I don't fuck with you anymore. It's just that I was thinking, I know you lied. You already kicked this out. You already had somebody kick us out of that pretty girls only group chat, and you never apologized for that or stood up for the, for us when we did get kicked out. Like, what's the real issue, you know? So I unfollowed her thinking that maybe she would DM me or hit me up on through phone saying, hey, I'm sorry, or da 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 da. <sighs> Y'all know that shit did not happen. So after I unfollowed her, maybe like a week later, she blocked me. She blocked me and my friend Lily, and I was like, that's so weird, like what the heck, because we didn't do nothing to that girl. But I remember after she had blocked me, like months later and everything, like when other people were like, oh, what happened to you and such and such, I thought y'all were friends. First off, I never spoke bad about her because at the end of the day, like she is younger than me, so I felt like maybe she's still trying to find like her like where she fits. I was just thinking maybe she's finding herself. So I never really talked bad about her. I mean, she's talked bad about me, but I haven't really said anything. But yeah, so I remember I would be telling my friends, I'd be like, oh yeah, we was cool. I don't know what happened. She just started hanging out with another group of friends and that's that. And that's what like I would tell people because I'm not finna just, I don't know what happened. It is so crazy because a lot of people would be like, girl, you know that girl is jealous of you. And I, oh, dude, I'm like jealous. Like, what, what could she be jealous of? Like, she looks, first of all, she looks just like me. So, I don't understand. But yeah, she was jealous of me. And it's like, it's so crazy because now that I look back, there were a lot of signs given to me to kind of say she has some type of resentment towards me at a certain point but it's just like i let it slide all the time y'all don't let anything slide if you if something is like bothering you like something's bothering you for a reason you know the lesson in that story is be careful who you surround yourself by and stuff and not everyone is really like your friend I thought she was my friend, and maybe we were genuinely friends at first, but I don't know what happened. I really don't. Another life lesson that I've learned is budgeting is key. Like, you definitely need to learn how to budget. And also be comfortable with telling people, nah, I ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? Because people will understand. Because, in, especially here in Atlanta, everything is like flex culture. Well, it's not even just Atlanta, it's like everywhere. 
but everyone is always like flexing something the seven third and me i have almost fallen into the habit of let me get something designer just because i can afford it and da 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 da, da. but y'all all that designer stuff like all that flexing lifestyle it gets old it gets old and then what do you gain from it at the end of the day because it's like once you buy whatever you bought and you post that one picture it's over for that little item you know what i'm saying like we all know you had that chanel bag you know what see so yeah, i've gotten to the point where it's like i don't want to flex well first of all i don't want to flex in general but if i'm gonna flex something it's not gonna be an item it's gonna be a lifestyle like i'm going to flex a lifestyle and i do want to live a luxurious lifestyle that's what i talk about a lot on my tiktok all that flex and stuff is for the birds like for real, for real even social media like i don't have facebook i don't have snapchat instagram it's deactivated so don't have that like twitter no so i'm just really trying to like disconnect myself and reconnect within myself you know what i'm saying I'm sure there's some other life lessons that I learned, but I will say now that I'm about to be 25, I definitely want to travel more this year. I'm definitely focusing more on myself this year, like even more into myself than I had before. Cause I just want to really like know myself, what I like, what I don't like, create boundaries for myself do things for myself i also want to focus on self-care as well i want to focus on just becoming like more womanly like i feel like 25 is a big age it's like a i'm a woman for real for real age and i feel like i just need to grow up sometimes because like sometimes i feel like a kid still and it's like but i'm not a kid anymore it's I don't know. It's like, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't know. And it's so crazy. I've always said big things will happen for me at the age of 25. So, we'll see how this year goes. And I truly feel that. So I feel like it's so cliche to say, but it's so true. Like, I do feel like I have a different mindset than what I had when I was 24. And, I mean, that's probably what everybody says every year that they get older. But... I swear it's true all right so the look is now complete i will say on camera i don't know why my makeup look looks a lot lighter than probably because of all the lighting so if you see me in real life like everything matches and everything is like my skin tone so Harry. the nose contour is out of control but you guys it is literally 4 16 a.m I did not know I was filming this damn late. <laughs> Y'all, this is literally my last day being 24. I am so excited. I cannot wait to see what 25 brings. I kind of want to do like a message to myself. So since I am going to post this video, so I kind of want to look back. But Jamie, you're an awesome person. You... Look, y'all, why am I going to cry? Okay, I did not expect myself to, like, start tearing up. So I got some knackers just in case because we're not going to ruin my makeup. But, Jamie, you're so awesome. I love you so much. You've accomplished so much in, like, these past few years. And, but you've been through so much. You've accomplished so much. I can't wait to see where you are. A year from now keep going you're on the right path you are where you need to be everything i love you so much you're where you're supposed to be in life and i cannot wait to see where you are a year from now you are the greatest you always have been it's always been in you you always knew it see you show it okay y'all i had to get myself together <sighs> But yeah, I cannot wait to like look back at that part, that segment of the video like a year from now because I don't know. I just want to see where I'm at when I'm 
I'm about to be turning 26 in 2023. So it's crazy. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.